Okay, so we're going to do some trigger point injections today and actually going to talk a little bit about management of the trigger points. And um, so Dr. Bursa here is going to uh, mix up some steroid. Dr. Bursa, you want to talk to us a little bit about what you're doing? Okay. So we're going to use solumedrol. Um, this standard vial is 125 milligrams in 2 milliliters of fluid. So we're going to draw up about 0.6 milliliters, which is about 40 milligrams and then dilute that with uh, about 4.4 4. Uh, 4. 4 milliliters of 0.5% bupivacaine for a total of 5 milliliters for our injection today. What size needle are you going to be using? Today we're going to be using a 27 gauge inch and a quarter needle. All right, good enough. Here's our patient. How are you? Good. So um, you're okay with uh, helping create a teaching video that ends up on YouTube? And now so we're going to find a... the area that uh, is spasm for sure, and then we're going to mark it so that when we come back to do our uh, is that injection. the spot right there? Yeah, that's tender today. Yeah. And that's the same spot that I had identified previously. So what we'll do, this is, if you could feel this, this is very hypertonic. The muscle is really knotted up right there um, and pushing on it produces pain. So that's the spot that we're looking for right there. So it's right underneath of my finger. I'm just going to take my pen. I'm just going to make a little mark on you right here, okay? okay. And that way we can find the same spot. It's important to pay attention to the angle. Uh, when we go in with the needle, it'll be hard to, hard to feel it in the same way. So we've got to pay attention to the the angle and how to get to that same uh, that same trigger point in the muscle. So it's going to be about like that. Okay. All right. So we're going to prepare this area. This isn't a sterile procedure, but I'm going to do a fairly wide prep anyway. Um, it never hurts, and especially when you're doing any kind of injection, it's best to uh, be on the safe side as far as that goes. So this is just some cold soap. I'm gonna clean you off. Okay. So how are you gonna inject this? So with this injection, I'm gonna. I know where the trigger point is. I'm just gonna go straight down into the muscle fascicle and inject, draw back a little bit, and then fan out just to make sure that we cover the uh, the entire area. So I'm gonna use a little uh, this pain ease vape, vapor, vapor coolant. coolant. Yep. So this is gonna be real cold on your shoulder, okay? It's just to help numb you up a little bit. So you do that right until the skin turns white. Okay. A little stick, okay? Okay. So we're just gonna go in to about the depth that I uh, palpated. We're gonna draw back. And I think I'm right in that muscle, so. Yep, it feels like it. Good. I'm gonna inject about a little less than half. And I'm gonna do a kind of a four point uh, four point fan here with the remainder of it. I think the important thing is just to make sure you don't go so deep that you you know do a pneumothorax or drop yeah, absolutely. drop a lung or something like that. So in this in this particular uh, case we have to be very careful not to go uh, go too deep. That's why it's important to pay attention to um, how deep you're palpating. You doing okay? Yep. Almost done. How deep you're palpating. The, the longer you do this, the more you can get a sense of how deep your uh, your tissues are. Um, and you just have to be real careful of that. Okay, all done. Was that too painful, ma'am? Oh, no. It, it was uncomfortable, not painful. Go ahead and move around a little bit, so go ahead and sit up and... Let's see if we, did we find the right spot. That's better. Oh yeah, I could not do that before. Yeah, so when she first came in, her range of motion was, uh, in rotation, was restricted side to side. She had, um, you know, probably 20 <coughs> to 25 degrees side to side and only um, probably about 10, 15 degrees yeah. of flexion, although she had full extension. After the first uh, facilitated positional release treatment, 
um, we got full uh, full rotational range of motion, but still had some problems with flexion, which makes sense given where her trigger point was. Um, and now, uh, can you take your chin all the way down to your chest? Almost. We couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't get there before. So I would. Yeah. Uh, and how's your pain? If uh, scale of one to ten. Am I right now? None. None. But whenever I go down like that, it's probably five, but not okay. as bad like I told you last time. I was jerking my head back up. So. Good. So do you, do you think that she should do some uh, stretching now, gentle stretching? Absolutely. Gentle stretching after this can really help. Um, you know, all of the things that we would normally prescribe for muscle spasm can help. Um, heat, massage, gentle stretching all can, uh, can help keep this from coming back. Okay. And you can actually do the, you know, the, your significant other at home can take and do the ischemic pressure, basically take the, their thumbs and find the area that hurts the most and then just put downward pressure for about three minutes or so and until the, until the muscle underneath it collapses we call it we say it gets ischemic but i don't know exactly what's happening under there okay. but the muscles do uh, relax and um, i think though you'll find that uh, once the soreness you know anytime you've had a needle stuck in there just like a flu shot it's going to hurt but once that wears off and once the steroid does its thing that you'll be better if yeah, not, so. <laughs> yeah, if not, you can come back and blame Dr. Bursa, okay? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm satisfied. We got about 50% resolution with, yeah, uh, with FPR and then about, uh, I mean, almost 100% resolution with uh, trigger point injection. So all, all things considered, this um, has uh, been a good, uh, good treatment for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and, and, and again, I think the, the issue is that patients come back sometimes after months and months of just not getting this resolved because everybody's trying to do the traditional ways of either hitting them with narcotics or opiates or, or um, uh, anti-inflammatory medicines, and you really gotta do something aggressive on the muscle. Absolutely. You have to do something aggressive on that muscle. And I think, you know, we talk about in, a, in atrial fibrillation, AFib begets AFib, um, and I think to, to some extent it's the same with somatic dysfunction. Somatic dysfunction begets somatic dysfunction. So the longer something is in a, a dysfunctional position, the more likely it is to stay there and the harder it is to treat. So in this case, early treatment is, uh, is a good thing.